Hey ladies and gentlemen, it's Mr. Anderson. We are back together again today to talk about section 5.3.3 from our CPM ebook. And our goal today is to be able to talk about whether or not a sequence is a function and to maybe come up with a way to assess that. Um, <clears throat> In the, uh, the major header right below the, the lesson title, we see the, uh, the goal comparing the sequences to functions. And I read right here, throughout this chapter, you have been learning about sequences. In chapter one, you started to learn about functions, right? Started because learning about functions is um, something that occurs over several, several math courses. But what is the difference? In this lesson, we're gonna compare and contrast sequences with functions. By the end, we're going to be able to answer these questions. Is a sequence different from a function, right? And then, what is the difference between a sequence written in a t of n format and a function f of x format with the same equation, right? Because they do have different meanings. They look very, very similar, but the different letters imply some different things. And just like we've done earlier in this unit, we're going to go ahead and we're going to let the problem, um, one of the first problems in this case, 5.5-111, um, frame our approach. And they give us a sequence to start with. And this one, there's nothing super special about it, but it does really give us a good um, frame for how to tackle something like this. So I've taken this and I put it into our notes and we've got the sequence right there, negative five, negative one, three, and then seven. And we're asked in part A to create multiple representations of that, namely a table, a graph, and an equation um, for this sequence. Well, I think the first thing that I am going to do is come up with a table for this equation. And if you remember anything we've done, I'm gonna go ahead with a horizontal approach and I will put n the sequence number as my independent variable and I will put t of n I'm sorry I said sequence number term number I'm sorry n is the term number t of n the value of that term as my dependent variable and you're looking right now you're going Anderson you've only got four terms written up there <sighs> what gives like there's five blanks in your table. Yeah, I recognize right away that when we go from negative five to negative one to three to seven, we're growing by four every single time. And that growth rate is constant. So that means to me that this sequence is an arithmetic sequence. And because it's arithmetic, it's going to align with a linear format. So when we go to write the equation, right? And this is, this is prior learning from, from section 5.2, when we go to write the equation, that common difference is going to be my slope, my m, and that starting value is going to be my y-intercept. I don't have the y-intercept there. I'm going to need to find it, and the table is going to help. Let me remind you how. Okay, the first term, second term, third term, and fourth term are going to go right here, right? And then I just copy from what I have above, right? The first, second, third, and fourth term are right there, but now... I want the zeroth term. I want that y-intercept, right? Because zero, of course, comes before one, two, three, and four. All right, so I ask myself, hey, what was I doing again to get the uh, next term from the previous term? Well, I was adding four. So then my question is, what number plus four gives me negative five? Or if you want, think backwards. Use a little algebraic reasoning and say, all right, negative 5 minus 4 is what number? And the answer is negative 9. There is that y-intercept value. And that allows me to take the table and throw it into an equation form. And I can write it as t of n equals the slope, or that common difference, 4 times n, and then plus the y-intercept, but because my y-intercept is negative, I'll write minus 9. Okay, so there's my table representation. There's my equation representation. Let's take a look at the graph. All right, now I went ahead and did this ahead of time. I took and I made that table, and I put in 1, 2, 3, and 4 for my term numbers. I put in negative 5, negative 1, 3, and 7 for my term values, and now I'm just going to add what I 
assume to be my y-intercept. And this doesn't have to be in order. Desmos can handle that. And I'll adjust my table also slightly. And now what I can do is I can make sure by graphing the function y equals mx plus b and y equals mx plus b format that this is going to go through all those, um, um, what's it called, those points. I can make sure that I've got this thing done correctly. But this is especially relevant today because I can see the sequence on my graph and I'm going to graph my function and I'm going to ask, are they the same thing? So again, f of x, if you like, or y equals, right? Um, and then it was 4x minus 9, okay? Now, sure enough, it does go through and nail all these points, right? But the question we're investigating is, are they the same, right? And I can turn this off. And turn it back on. I can turn this off and turn it back on. Do they have some similarities? Of course they do, but the question again, are they the same, right? Okay, um, is it possible for the equation representing t of n e to equal 400? Justify your answer. The easiest way to do this, my dears, is to go ahead and just assume it is possible. Let's just kind of question that. Is it possible for that, and I'm questioning it, to equal 400? And then do some solving. Like, if it was possible, what term number would it be? So I'm just going to use my rules of algebra, and I'm going to say 409 equals 4n, and then I divide by 4, and I'll work this way because I'm out of room, and I get 100. You know what? I can't do that in my head. Thankfully, I've got my handy-dandy TI-84, or any sort of calculator will work here. 409 divided by 4, it tells me that's 102.25. Huh, is it possible to have a hundred and second and a quarter term? The answer is no. Remember, we've seen this in a previous, wah -wah, previous lesson, that um, we only have positive integer values for our term numbers, right? Because our, our, our term numbers are the order in which things are in a list. And we use the counting numbers for that, right? First, second, third, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So I could have 102nd, I could have 103rd, but I can't have a term in between those two. All right, create multiple representations as you did in part A for the function f of x equals 4x minus nine. How are these things the same and different, right? Can you see their differences in each representation. Well, first and foremost, I'm going to go back to my Desmos graph. One thing that I notice about the graph of the sequence, the green dots, is that it is discrete, right? These are individual dots on my screen. All right. But the other thing that I notice about the black line, the function, is that it's continuous, right? It exists between the dots and after the dots and guess what it exists here in what i would call negative x or negative n space before the dots okay so a major major difference is that it's continuous and that a function allows the black line allows for values of x that are negative okay so that is a giant difference between a sequence and a function, right? Something you're going to want to maybe um, take down in your notes or, or pay attention to, right? Um, and I'm not going to write that here. I am just going to uh, rely on you to, to do some listening and, and talking about it, okay? For the function um, f of x equals 400, and, I'm sorry, 4x uh, minus 9, is it possible for f of x to equal 400? Um, and the answer is, in this case, yeah, it is. Now, I could do the exact same solving, but again, we could go ahead and set this equal to that. But because in this case, um, I'm solving for x and not n, and x is allowed to be a rational value, 102.25. does not need to be an integer. Um, x definitely can be 102.25. So that definitely, definitely for us. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and take a peek at um, something very, very similar. But instead of using a um, arithmetic function, let's look at this through the eyes of a geometric function. Okay. So very, very similar problem. But notice now we're talking about 
a geometric function, uh, I'm sorry, a geometric sequence and an exponential function. So here we go. Is f of x equals 2 times 3 to the x power a function? Why or why not? Um, well, I guess let's let's look at both of these, right? Um, it, and, and additionally, is this a function? I would argue that both of these things are functions. And the reason I would is um, because each input has a unique output. Um, that's kind of the nature of, of an exponential curve. Um, each input is going to have an output, right? It would certainly pass the vertical line test. But remember, even this sequence, despite the fact that it's discrete, would also have that exact same, and I know that doesn't look the exact same, those, the, um, the shape isn't quite there, but um, hopefully you understand what I'm, what I'm driving at there. Each input does have a unique output. It would, and, and, and trust me, um, I'm, I'm not going to build a table here, but um, you, you could pass the vertical line test, right? Um, or both of these would pass the, the vertical line test. Um, part B says, hey, is this thing possible for T of N to equal 1400? If so, find the value of n that makes t of n 1400, um, and if not, justify why not. And, and here's what um, I would consider doing in a problem like this. I would take this and I would use my Desmos machine to do some entering. Now, I know Desmos comes with some limitations, and we've got to um, put this in um, using x's and y's, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But um, I'm, I'm considering the the function, um, uh, the the sequence. I'm sorry, t of n equals two times three to the n power. So it's going to be y equals two times three to the x power. And when I do this, um, I can see my graph, and again, I, I see that exponential curve. And I'm going to zoom out. So because it's asking about a value, I believe it was. 1400. I want to zoom out like way out so I can see way up there. And specifically, I want to look for values way the heck up here. So now I'm going to zoom back in and I'm going to try to kind of hone in on some of these things here. And I'm looking to see if I can put a counting number in or an integer in and get out 1400. And so what I do here is I just click on the uh the the function here and i'm looking for the value of 1400 and is it going to give it to me it may not give it to me so remember i can just graph that line y equals 1400 and sure enough i can find that point of intersection it tells me it is 5.36 and it's like oh man if this was a nice whole number value it would be possible, indicating there's an integer that could go in for x and it would spit out 1400. Uh, I'm sorry, an integer that could go in for n and it would spit out 1400 for t of n. So because it's not, this is no, not possible. Okay, now is it possible for this thing, f of x to equal 1400? The answer for that is yeah. Why? Because that graph is continuous. And maybe that doubles down for you that this graph is discrete. Okay, how are the two functions similar? How are the two functions different? Well, ladies and gents, first of all, the graphs are going to take on a very, very similar shape. But the graph of the sequence is definitely different because it's discrete. The graph of the, uh, sequ uh, the function is definitely um, different because it is um continuous right and and that is evident um in that uh in that graphical or that that visual representation okay one more time a discrete function only has those nice integer values um that it accepts as, as inputs and, and provides outputs the continuous function will take those rational values and, and um yeah it, it you know doesn't allow me and i'm not i'm kind of way in there zoom out does allow me to, and you can kind of see it over here, the red line extending, um, also exists in that negative space for x, right? Okay, um, a little bit of review preview here for you guys, folks, and it is here at the bottom of my page, and it's just a couple problems, 17, 117 to 119, and ladies and gents, remember, um, I want you to try these things because 
If you try them, you're going to know what kind of questions you have. Ladies and gents, thanks for watching. Have a great day.